here's a nice proof for the product rule for differentiation. So if we have a product of two functions, we need to be able to differentiate them. And the proof of this is going to involve Newton's quotient. So remember, Newton's quotient tells us that the derivative of any function f at x is equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of f at x plus h minus f at x, that's our change in y, all over h, that's our change in x. Now, using this, let's come up with an equation for the derivative of a product of two functions. So let's say we have the function h at x, which is equal to a product of two functions. It's a product of f at x times g at x. Using Newton's quotient, I could write that the derivative of h at x would be equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of this function at x plus h minus that function. That's just following Newton's quotient. So it would be f at x plus h times g at x plus h minus, and I'm going to leave this big space here, you'll see why in a minute, minus just that h at x function, so f at x times g at x. And this needs to be all over h. So let me just make sure you're on track with what I've done so far. I'm just following Newton's quotient. This right here is just my h at x plus h function. And this is just my h at x function. So I did h at x plus h minus h at x all over h. That's the derivative of h at x. It just so happens my h at x function is a product of two things. I left this big space because the way it's written right now, there's nothing really I could simplify. So what I'm going to have to do, and you wouldn't just think to do this. This, this was discovered through lots of trial and error and just manipulating equations. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add zero in a fancy way. I'm just gonna add zero. I'm not gonna change the value, but I'm gonna rewrite zero as uh, a plus and a minus of the same thing. So I'm actually going to subtract f at x plus h times g at x. And I'm also going to add f at x plus h times g at x. Now, since those are the same thing, really what I did was I added zero, but I did it in a way so that I'm going to be able to simplify this big limit statement and be able to come up with a, a rule for how we differentiate a product of two functions. So what we're going to do now, I'm actually going to do a little bit of grouping. I'm going to look at this fraction, and I'm also going to look at this fraction. And now I'm grouping them in that way because if we look at these first two terms here, notice they both have an f at x plus h, so I could common factor that out. So let me rewrite those first two terms over h with the f at x plus h factored out. And I need to still write my limit statement. So it's the limit as h goes to zero. Now I'm going to common factor out that f at x plus h from both terms, and then that leaves me with g at x plus h minus g at x over h. So I just common factor out the f, the f at x plus h from both of those first two terms. Now I still have plus this other fraction I talked about where I have the last two terms of my numerator that are also both being divided by h. But you see what's in common between the last two terms? They both have a g at x. So I could common at factor out that g at x from both of those terms. So I'm going to write plus, now the limit is being applied to all the terms, so I have to, I'm gonna write my limit statement here as well, plus the limit as h goes to zero. Now I'm going to common factor out that g at x. And then what I have is from the last two terms, when I take out the g at x, I have f at x plus h minus f at x. And those are all over h, don't forget. And now, so I have two limits going on here. I have a limit of a product here plus a limit of a product here. Now keep in mind, uh, a limit of a product of two things is equal to the product of their limits. So what I mean by that is, 
if I want the limit of this product of things, I can just find the limit of each of them and then multiply them together. So I can find the limit as h goes to zero of f at x plus h and multiply that by the limit as h goes to zero of that fraction. Same thing over here, I have the limit of a product of two things. So I can do the limit as h goes to zero of g at x, multiply that by the limit as h goes to zero of f at x plus h minus f at x all over h. Now, do you notice something really important here? Do you notice this and this are just the derivatives of g at x and f at x? If we look back up at Newton's quotient, it matches this exactly. f prime of x equals the limit as h goes to zero of f at x plus h minus f at x over h. So this right here that I just started, that's f prime of x. And this is the same thing, but with g. So this is g prime of x. So I can replace this with g prime of x, and I can replace this whole thing with f prime of x. That's the foundation of why I went through this whole process is being able to get those expressions. So h prime of x equals, now if I want the limit of f at x plus h as h goes to zero, I can just evaluate that, just plug zero in for h and I would just get f at x. So I have f at x and then this gets replaced with g prime of x plus the limit as h goes to zero of g at x, well that doesn't even involve an h so that's just g of x times f prime of x. And that's my product rule. What we have here, and typically I actually, I actually write it in the other order. I write this product first, and I write f prime of x times g of x, plus then I write this product, and I write the derivative first, g prime of x times f at x. What we have here, if our original function, keep in mind the original function h at x was f at x times g at x, and let's think of this as our first function and this as our second function. If I want to differentiate this product, what we do is we find the derivative of the first function, multiply that by the second function, plus find the derivative of the second function and multiply that by the first function. And that's our product rule.